So what's going on guys, Kades here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best destroyer PvE build in Lost Ark. So in this guide I will show you what abilities and awakening skill you want to get. Then I will explain what are the best engravings, gems, runes and even cards to use for any game content. And then lastly I will show you the best gameplay and even which stats you need to allocate for PvE. So you would be able to get the best results and highest damage possible and much more. So no matter how low or high level or gear score your character is, you can easily use this build and follow the step by step guide. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So Destroyer is a slow but very hard hitting class. He has a lot of shielding from his skills and he can do crazy amount of damage. In general Destroyers are very good, fun and not hard class to pick up and learn. So then at the end game we will be using the Rage Hammer engraving which will increase our crit rate and crit damage based on the amount of cores that we use. This engraving is by far the best option that will give us the highest damage possible and will make our gameplay very fun. So if you are looking for the best leveling, repairing, chaos dungeon or any other PV content build then this is the one for you. Ok so now let's move over to the build itself and these are the skills you want to have. And here at the start I will show you a full end game build with 412 skill points. But later in the video I will show you the same build but just with 252 points. So this way no matter if you just started playing this class or if you are already in the late game you will be able to use this build right from the start. So then for the first ability we have the heavy crash and we want to use just 4 levels to unlock the quick blow. Then for your gems you don't want to select anything and then lastly for your rune you want to get the rage. Then for the second ability we have the full swing and we use 12 levels to select the agile movement scary hammer and beast eye. Then for your gems you want to get both types, so one for cooldown reduction and the second one for damage increase. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the overwhelm. Then for the next one we have the dreadnought ability and we use 12 more levels to unlock the tenacity, tough body and violent hammer. Then for your gems you want to get the cooldown reduction gem and then lastly for your rune you want to get the protection. Then for the fourth ability we have the seismic hammer and we use once again 12 levels to select the tenacity, sharp wall and starving strength. Then for your gems you again want to get both types. So one for cooldown reduction and the second one for damage increase. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the gale wind. Then for the next one we have the endure pain skill. And we want to use 10 levels to unlock the wild strike, trace of pain and healthy mentality. Then for your gems you want to get the cooldown reduction gem. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the focus. Then moving over to the next ability which is called earth eater. And we use 12 levels to select the enhanced strike. Tenacity and Earth and Rage. Then for your gems you want to get both types, so one for cooldown reduction and the other one for damage increase. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the Gale Wind. So then for one of the last abilities we have the Jumping Smash. And we use 12 more levels to unlock the superior change, lucky core and smash. Then for your gems you want to get the cooldown reduction gem. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the overwhelm. And then for the last and final ability we have the perfect swing. And we use our last 12 levels to select the weak point detection, sharp hammer and interception. Then for your gems you want to get both types. So one for cooldown reduction and the second one for damage increase. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the gale wind. Then as well after level 50 for your awakening skill you want to get the big bang. And then on top of all this focus on equipping as high item level gear as you can. And then at the end game you should have 1250 crit and 450 swiftness. But if you haven't reached this point yet then try to have around 70% stats into crit and 30% stats into swiftness. Ok so then the way I would recommend to upgrade this build is at level 50 you will get around 250 points. So this is how your build should look like. But then by doing more and more endgame content you will get more points. And then at the absolute endgame this is how your build should look like with all the 412 skill points. So at the start you use the 252 point build and then by leveling up and completing quests you will get more points. So just keep on improving your skills and getting higher tier runes and gems as well. So then let's move over to the engravings and you want to get the rage hammer. This engraving when you use the gravity release skill which are purple abilities they will give you plus 5% crit rate and plus 15% crit damage depending on how many amounts of course you use. So then for the second engraving we have the master brawler and this will give you a head attack damage up to 25%. So as you can tell this is a very nice damage addition to have. Then the next one is called supercharge and this engraving will increase your charging speed by 40%. 
and it will increase your damage by plus 20%. And as most of our main purple skills have to be charged, so this will give us a lot of damage increase on top of everything else. Then for the fourth engraving you want to get the barricade, and this will give you 16% damage increase when you are shielded. And as most of our abilities will give you a shield, so this is a nice damage boost. Then the next one is called grudge, and this is more advanced engraving that is recommended for tier 3 content. This grudge is the most efficient engraving against mobs, and you will get your damage increased, but in return you will take 20% more damage. So when you get to the very end game content which is called tier 3, then get this engraving. And before using it, get it to at least level 2. Because at level 1 this engraving is not that efficient. And then for the last one we have the Curse Doll, and this is a significant attack power increase at the cost of 25% healing penalty. This penalty can be offset by paying more attention on dodging red AOE circles and by using healing potions more often. So then in a quick summary, I would recommend to get the top 3 engravings first and then the bottom 3. And then last but not the least, let's move over to your cards and you want to get the Shandy, Azena and Anana. Ninevin, Vey, Baldur and Tarwain. In general, these cards are an endgame system for maximizing your character, so you don't have to get them right away, but these specific cards will optimize your damage and defense output in PvE even more. I did bunch of testing for this build and this was the best and most optimized card set. Ok so then moving over to the gameplay, and if you have played this class while leveling, you will be very familiar with the skills. So I will just try to give you a short description. So then for the first ability we have the heavy crush, and the skill will smash the ground inflicting bunch of damage to the enemies, and if you land a hit you will charge one core. Then the next ability is called jumping smash, and you will leap to the targeted area 10 meters, while swinging your hammer and then you will inflict bunch of damage and if you land a shot you will right away charge 2 cores. Then for the next skill we have the Dreadnought, and this is your one and only counter attack ability, that will give you 2 cores as well. And because we have selected the Violent Hammer Tripod, we will be able to attack twice the enemy while in the air, so this will make this skill a lot easier to hit. Then for the next ability we have the Endure Pain, and this skill will charge 3 cores, while at the same time give you a push immunity, and if you land your hit, you will debuff the enemies for minus 24% defense for 6 seconds. So this is a good debuff skill as well. Then the next ability is called Earth Eater, which is our first purple skill. And keep in mind that purple skills are this build's main damage dealers. So this ability has the highest stagger in the entire game. And on top of all this, you'll be able to spin it 3 times each time inflicting bunch of damage and then the last swing will do massive amount of DPS. Then moving over to the next one which is called full swing and this is another great damage dealer that strikes the ground and makes you spin, each spin inflicting bunch of damage giving you plus 10% attack speed and plus 10% damage and as this is a charging skill so if you overcharge you can do massive amounts of damage. Then for one of the last abilities we have the perfect swing and this is one of the strongest skills that the shoyer has. You can charge the skill two times inflicting a lot of damage and then if you overcharge you will do two times more damage than the first two charges. Then for the last ability we have the seismic hammer and the skill will make your character jump and smash the ground while inflicting a lot of damage and then the jump on the ground itself will create a 10 meter wall that inflicts even more damage to the enemy. And then last but not the least for your awakening skill we have the big bang and from both of our two options this one will do the highest damage overall. So in a quick summary you will gather energy around that will explode and do massive amounts of damage. The more you hold and gather the energy, the more damage you will do. And while you're using the skill, all damage and debuffs are reduced by 50%. Ok so then let's take a closer look at your best skill rotation and I will explain why we use the skills that we chose and in which specific order. So the highest damage rotation is to first of all use the Endor Pain, then the Perfect Swing, then Jumping Smash, then Heavy Crush, then Earth Eater, then Dreadnought, then Heavy Crush, then Full Swing, then Heavy Crush again, then Jumping Smash and then finish it off with the Seismic Hammer. So let's see what we did in this rotation. The way the show works is that we use our blue skills to get these cores, which gives us more damage and then we use our main damage dealers, which are all the purple skills. So the main rotation is to always first of all use the blue skills to get to 3 cores, then we use one purple skill, then again we use blue skills to get to 3 cores, then we use one purple skill and so on and so forth. So in this rotation we first of all use Endor Pain to get to 3 cores, then we use the perfect swing which will do max damage and consume all orbs, then we use the jumping smash which will give us 2 cores, then we combine this with heavy crush which will give us 1 core, so 2 plus 1 is 3 again, so then we use earth eater ability, and then again from here we just basically keep on repeating the same process. So now in my last and final conclusions for this build, 
Remember that the Shoyar is a slow class, and most of his skills are charging abilities. But in exchange you will get the second highest amount of HP and armor. Then as well as I mentioned, the Shoyar build is very simple, and you will get the highest damage numbers as long as you keep on remembering the playstyle. Which is to use blue skills to get to 3 cores, then use one purple skill and rinse and repeat. Then as well, a bunch of your abilities are charging skills. So I would always recommend to never just quickly use one skill and then moving over to the next one, but instead you want to overcharge most of your abilities to the maximum limit. And then remember that your abilities have the highest stagger in Lost Ark, so you should be always stunning your enemies 24-7, and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Lost Ark PV classes that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you wouldn't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace. Yo, I ain't here for the